Great. So hi, Harold. It's so nice to meet you. And um, congratulations on From. Uh, you know, everybody's talking about this show. I know that the reason why I wanted to watch it because all the reviews I've read. Um, oh, good. Yeah. And so I know you've been doing shows like Goliath and The Rookie, but what made you want to come back to sci-fi after years away from Lost? <laughs> um, <laughs> look, <laughs> again, like Lost, From has got great writing. You know what I mean? And anytime that you get a chance to work with really fantastic writers who create um, really compelling characters, um, like uh, for me, I feel like I should jump at it. And, uh, and you know, when they asked me if I wanted to really do it, I was so super excited. And I, I know that Jeff Pinkner and Jack Bender really know how to tell stories like this. Do you know what I mean? Because of Lost, they had so much time to like sort of perfect that so I felt really safe with them and you know the things I sort of learned over the years and uh, I, I just wanted to get back to doing stuff that was super fun and really compelling and really challenging so yeah I was wondering if you knew like did you learn all the secrets about the show ahead of time like do you know what's going on or are you kind of going into it in the dark the way the audience is uh, well like Lost we totally did before but this I, I, for the first season, I, I, uh, they, they gave me a rundown of a bunch of different things that I really needed to know, but not more than I needed to know. <laughs> Mostly stuff about my character, Boyd Stevens. They kind of told me, you know, why he, you know, why his feelings were hurt, like why he was so heartbroken, his feelings were hurt. He was, why yeah. he was so heartbroken, the, the sort of ticking bomb that was his own body, like what that was about, and then all those things. And that gave me stuff to really work with and um, um, to, to, to make, you know, to, for me to cover up uh, as the character was evolving throughout the season. It was, uh, so, so I knew all that, but outside of that, I really don't know uh, what's going on. I don't know where we're going. I don't know what's happening. I don't know, um, you know, how we got here, why we're here. I'm really curious about Donna and Boyd's relationship. Like, I don't know how it got so fractured. And yeah, I know. I'm really it's curious good. about all that stuff. Wow. That's really cool though, that you like know some stuff, but not everything. So that's probably yeah, yeah. Good for your character too. Yeah, it um, is. <laughs> I love your character. And you know, there's this moment in episode four of the show where he like lets out this scream in front of a mirror and it's such an unhinged moment. And I was wondering like, where does that come from? What was like uh, the thought process with that? And what was it like filming that little moment? What's really interesting is that scene was written to go with another scene. Um, and, and Jack Bender in doing it, he, he, was, he was watching and he's like, it really doesn't work there. It really doesn't work. And so he found a place to put it that, that, oh, that wow. made it really significant in a different way, like a way that I hadn't even thought of. But, uh, um, but for me, the scream had always been, I don't, are you a parent? No, <laughs> I have uh, a dog. <laughs> you got a dog, okay, this is, this is great. You have those moments, you're like, why do I have this dog? Like, just, do you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I, he's actually trying to get in on this interview right now. So I've been like petting <laughs> him. <laughs> so, over right now. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're, I mean, we're renting an apartment at some place and we have to be super careful with the furniture. And a dog literally came in last night and just threw up on the rug. I was like, really? <laughs> Seriously, like, you know what I mean? You went out screaming. They make you want to scream. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so for me, I was able to tap into that as a dad, as a as a person, you know, I, you know, been married a long time. There are just times you're just like, just, hey, I'm going to go in the bathroom. I'll be back. And you just <laughs> scream your brains out. And then you come back and things are good. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, that kind of leads to like my next question is they're like, so we, we you're the only character, I think, one of the only characters we get flashbacks for and before I even saw the flashbacks of your character you could tell that the current state for Boyd is he's exhausted like just the way you carry yourself um and then seeing him in the flashbacks it's like oh he's completely different so I was wondering like um this seems like a physical role what kind of like physicality did you add to the character well th this is actually I think kind of uh well for me it's kind of interesting when I got the role I wanted him to be an ex-military guy right so I wanted him to have sort of a big presence on screen. And so I remember getting in the gym and then just like trying to really get bulky, but it was also the pandemic. 
So like while I was getting bulky, I was also just getting chubby. <laughs> so, so it kind of worked, it kind of didn't work. <laughs> um, but it all sort of led to his like being, you know, really tethered to the ground. And I, and I, and I felt like that. And then when we were gonna do the flashbacks, I literally started, I couldn't lose, you know, a bunch of weight that quickly, but I just needed to almost feel slimmer. So we got stuff uh, like more closer fitting costumes, tighter, some tighter fitting shirts that, that made it look like, oh, he just retired, that he, ha he hasn't been here and he doesn't have the weight of the world on his shoulders, which is what he does throughout. The way he walks is the weight of the world and he's got to figure it out. And so some of those things are real physical choices about like, you know, day in, day out, you, 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 you're trying to figure out how to save people and you have no idea where you are. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? And that all made sense. And having gone through the pandemic, that kind of daily, like, how do we get out of this? Like, and there's yeah. nowhere to go. There yeah. was really nowhere in the world to go. That kind of weight of that, I was able to sort of transfer that over to, to Boyd and and then, and then make some choices that I, I think were effective for the character. Yeah, well, well, and then when we learn why he's carrying this weight of the world on his shoulders, that shocking moment yeah. um, with your character and his wife. And, but I think it's interesting though, and I wanted to know, I, I feel like he's not beating himself up over it. He knew he had to do what he had to do to save his son. But do right. you think he, is actually really struggling with it and and he's throwing himself into saving the community and to avoid from going mentally going there a hundred percent yeah because other than that you would just break down right yeah like he just loves this woman and and other than that you would fall apart yeah but he his idea it, I, it's one of those things that i think that boyd must think all the time is if i could just get two of those seconds back <laughs> yeah. Just two of those seconds. It was just so quick. Right. He could have maybe shot her in the leg or shot her in the arm, but right. the threat of his son and she just killed, I don't know how many people she had just killed. And she right. wasn't in her right mind. If he just get two of those seconds back, he, he could have made a different choice, but he couldn't. And um and 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 so so I think he regrets it. He regrets it immensely, but he still has his son and yes I, I didn't even know how to describe it but that that <laughs> yeah yeah. But yeah he has to just walk around with that all all the time and yeah I, I just imagine I, I walked around with something like that all the time so that it felt like that um which was really uh uh sometimes quite difficult but but not as difficult as if I had actually done that yeah. <laughs> right I didn't have to kill nobody in order to feel it while I was acting yeah. <laughs> you know, I also find so interesting about your character is that he, you know, he sets up that punishment for people, that like trailer out front that Frank has to go into in the beginning, like early episodes. Mm -hmm. And do you think when he sets that up, does he, does he actually believe that he's ever going to have to use it? Or no. he, like, that's so interesting to me that he sets this up and then it's like, oh, I, now I have to follow through with this. And then the priest is kind of like pushing him to do it. Yeah. Um, I thought that was so interesting that like, that he also, I wonder like why the need to even have something like that. I wonder how, I mean, I guess we kind of get a glimpse of how bad the community was when he, sh when Boyd shows up, but. Right. And I think yeah. he's a guy who knows like human nature. Like I think he knows like, you know how he thinks he knows human nature yeah being in afghanistan and setting up those things you, you know that like people some people have followed the rules and some people just aren't going to and like you can ask them but like they actually need to be you need to show them and so i think he built this thing thinking i think he says it like i just thought they'd all be like oh no thank you i do not want to be food for these mountain like no thank yeah. you yeah and and there frank is and it's like I think he's just like, no, no, dude, no, ah, and then he has to, he has to do it because uh, Father Crosby is right. If you set it up and you don't use it, yeah. now, now, you, and now it's open season. And yeah. if, if, if you think it was terrible losing that little girl and her mom, wait till what happens next. Yeah. Wow. So it's a terrible choice. It's yes, terrible. he's placed with so many terrible choices. I mean, in show. Right, you could have just taken a bottle home. You could have got drunk at your house. You yeah, so many things. What yeah, 
<laughs> I love Boyd's relationship though with Sarah that kind of really blossoms towards the end of the season. And do you think he feels differently about her because of his wife? Like, do you think he kind of relates to her in a way that well, maybe because of what his wife went through since they were both affected by the place in a different way than everybody else? I, I think he does. I think at some point, even though he, you know, he was really, I mean, skeptical is a nice way to say it about her. He was really <laughs> skeptical. I think he, he really realizes that, you know, people are acting outside of themselves here, that there's something happening. And he also also realizes the, the real practical fact that, that there's something that's able to get into people's heads. Something's actually like, the, that's a really something, it's not like you just went crazy, like something's actually driving you. Yeah. And that being said, he, he's also then using Sarah as well. Because then, like, so there's a dual, like, he totally empathizes, and totally gets it, but there's a dual, like, Father Kotri is right, I need this kid. I need yeah. this kid, because some, something's talk, something really is talking to her. And I think he thinks those things, and then, unfortunately, he starts losing his own mind, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that doesn't go the way he planned. <laughs> I love in the finale, there's this moment where she like, he's like, go ahead, I'm gonna leave me to die here. Right. And she says like, no, like, let me help you. And he looks, you look at her like, no one's ever asked, no one's ever offered me help, like you're the helper. Right. So right. I was wondering, how does Sarah figure into this bigger journey for this character? Well, I, that's the thing that we're gonna find out. Like, yeah. I, I really don't even know. Like, you, <laughs> I, that's a question I'm like, hey, how does Sarah work here? And, and I know that when we were on set, um, Avery uh, 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 was always asking like, man, the people are gonna hate me. They're gonna kill my character, aren't they? And I was like, I don't think so, bud. I, I, <laughs> I just think like, I, I don't think so. One, either they're gonna like you, and, and I don't know the answer. Either they're gonna like you because we all like to have somebody we hate, or they're all gonna see that you actually aren't, this isn't you. Right. Like, like, the, like you are the person who wants to help you are the Sarah you keep presenting at the at the diner and at the other thing. And there's something else that's riding on your arm. You're not having a mental breakdown. Yeah. That like, and I think it's a chance for her to redeem herself and for us to like Sarah again. And so like I fully believe that she, you know, she's a character that stays, but you know, you don't I like know. Her these character. Things. I like her character. I like your relationship together because I feel yeah, it's like got, it's it's, it's very interesting. I really like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So it's really. You can really tell great. her that. that I we will. don't hate her. <laughs> I will. Nobody's rooting for her to be off the show. No. <laughs> <laughs> One last question. So uh, in the finale, the final scene, we see a bus pull up. Which at first I'm like, is it going to crash into the diner? Um, but, um, <laughs> is this? What do you think? Is it a new crew of people, or have the midnight monsters figured out how to drive? I'm pretty sure the cast of. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> 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 like the wonder years to step off the bus like hey yeah. <laughs> hey where are we <laughs> um i have i literally have no idea uh what that could even mean like it and it could be so many things it could be a bus load of people or a bus driver who just came from his last stop yeah like it could be yeah. so many different things and so i'm really curious about what what's coming off that bus but uh it is a, I mean, like it could have been anything. It could have been another car, but a bus? A I bus? know, right? A bus of people. <laughs> so that now, like, if your character makes his way back, he's got to deal with all those people a now. Too. Bus load yeah. of people. Like, it was hard enough. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we'll see. I think it's a really, again, I think it's a really good, uh, it's great writing. I think it's a really It's a great good. finale. Yeah. It yeah, really yeah, keeps really cool. you guessing. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We Can't know. wait to see what happens next. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah, it's, so been, it's been so great chatting with you and congratulations thank again. And yeah, look forward to seeing what happens next. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's been a fun interview and you're oh, so much fun. I appreciate it. I really oh, no really problem. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>